We're going to start with a review of uh, Maxwell's equations in free space. So uh, we have the electric flux uh, in a closed surface, the E dot dA integral uh, is equal to the charge enclosed by the surface divided by permittivity of free space. Now this result is known as Gauss law and it tells us that a charge distribution in a closed surface creates an electric flux. So when we have charge that is enclosed by a surface, the charge uh, distribution will create an electric flux. Okay. The magnetic flux uh, in a closed surface, B dot dA integral, is actually zero. So this would normally have magnetic charge uh, in, in the right-hand side, but Gauss law in magnetism says there are no magnetic monopoles. North and south poles always come in pairs. It's impossible to isolate magnetic monopoles. The path integral, E dot dS, uh, in, a, in the, the boundary of a closed surface, is equal to minus the change uh, rate of change of magnetic flux. This is known as Faraday's law, uh, a changing magnetic flux creates an electric field. So when we have a change in magnetic flux, there is an induced electric field uh, by this uh, changing flux. That's Faraday's law. Finally, we have a fourth Maxwell equation. The path integral B dot dS uh, is basically equal to mu zero times I enclosed by that surface plus mu zero epsilon zero permittivity of free space, permeability of free space, d phi e dt, the rate of change of electric flux. This is known as Ampere Maxwell law. Uh, the original Maxwell law was this, mu zero epsilon zero d phi e dt was added by Ampere. And it says that an electric current or a changing electric flux creates a magnetic field. So uh, let's uh, review what we just said. We need a charge distribution in an enclosed surface in order to create an electric flux or electric field. Uh, there is no magnetic monopole, so we don't get a magnetic flux by a closed uh, surface. A changing magnetic flux creates an electric field. A changing uh, electric flux creates a magnetic field. And the steady current here, uh, enclosed by a surface, will also create a magnetic field. So that's Ampere Maxwell law. So in addition to these four Maxwell equations in integral form, we have the Lorentz force law, which tells us what happens to a charge when it is placed in an electric field and a magnetic field. So the force that the charge will feel is uh, Q times E plus Q cross product of its velocity with the magnetic field. So that's our Lorentz force law. Now these set of equations, Maxwell's equations, and Lorentz force law uh, are basically quite powerful in explaining all electromagnetic interactions in vacuum. Okay, <clears throat> so we are in empty free space, then Q is equal to zero and I is equal to zero. So if we have uh, I is equal to zero here, we have integral B dot dS mu zero E zero epsilon zero d phi E dt E dot dS minus d phi B dt. These two equations, uh, as we will show, uh, imply that we have electromagnetic waves traveling at the speed of light. So light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. That's a very profound result. So two of Maxwell's equations in empty space, when we solve them, we see that um, the electromagnetic waves, uh, the electric field and magnetic field moving together, uh, they are traveling at the speed of light, which suggests that light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. There is a very nice experiment performed by Hertz Hertz had a, a transmitter which consists of two spherical electrodes connected to an induction coil. So here you have an inductor and capacitor basically. So this induction coil provides short voltage surges uh, to the spheres. So you have these uh, charges developing in these spheres. And these set up oscillations in the discharge between the electrodes. So these oscillations basically 
will create electromagnetic uh, waves and if we put a receiver which consists of the same system induction coil and uh, spherical electrodes when the uh, receiver uh, gap is adjusted such that the natural frequency of uh, oscillation uh, matches that of the frequency of oscillation of the uh, transmitter omega r is equal to 1 over square root lc remember for the lc oscillator that's our resonance uh, frequency uh, we see sparks developing in the gap so by changing the resonance frequency of the receiver which is by done by playing with the gap that means you're changing the capacitance remember capacitance is epsilon 0 a over d so capacitance is epsilon zero area of the electrodes divided by the distance between the electrons so this distance is changed therefore the capacitance is varied and when we have the resonance frequency of this lc oscillator one over squared lc matching that of the transmitter we see sparks so uh, the frequency of the uh, radiation generated by the spark gap device was 100 megahertz in this experiment and we see that this uh, radiation created by the spark gap device actually shows all wave-like properties interference diffraction reflection refraction polarization etc uh, which is basically uh, saying that this is an this is a wave electromagnetic wave and the wave propagation was at the speed of light so electromagnetic waves were traveling at the speed of light so which again suggests experimentally that light is a form of electromagnetic radiation okay so uh, here we have talked about maxwell's equations that describe electric and magnetic fields in free space uh, for this case we have gauss law uh, which states that if you have a charge distribution in a closed surface that creates an electric field, Gauss law in magnetism, there is no magnetic monopole, so uh, an enclosed surface uh, will not create a magnetic flux uh, due to uh, magnetic monopoles. Faraday's law, a changing magnetic flux creates an electric field. Ampere Maxwell law, a changing electric flux creates a magnetic field and a enclosed current by a surface will create a magnetic field and Lorentz force law describes to us the force felt by a charge in, a, in, a, in the presence of an electric and magnetic field and we have seen that uh, as we will show explicitly in the next lecture these two Maxwell equations in empty space with no current and no charge will um, imply that there will be electromagnetic waves traveling at the speed of light which shows light is a form of electromagnetic radiation and the experiment performed by hertz consists of a transmitter which is an lc oscillator and the receiver another lc oscillator that's going to have a variable capacitance by changing the a gap of the gap between the electrodes and we see the de detection of the electromagnetic waves created by the transmitter when the uh, capacitance is adjusted such that it matches the resonance frequency of the uh, incoming waves so uh, the radiation generated by this uh, spark gap device uh, shows wave-like characteristics and traveling at the speed of light which basically shows experimentally uh, what Maxwell's equations suggest.